Welcome everyone to another quick video here about Analog's Pocket and their new Open FPGA program. I actually wanted to make a video about this already some months ago when this Analog Pocket was announced, but between our Linux distribution and other stuff, I thought it's maybe not the most important. Um, but now this changes everything because just like yesterday or so, the last day they announced this Open FPGA program and making this device, in my opinion, a magnitude more interesting. So what is the analog po pocket? That is a relatively mm, high-end, they are not calling it emulation, aka FPGA based, mostly Game Boy, but also other emulator with relatively high-end hardware, meaning two FPGAs as far as I understand it, one, at least one in Inter, previously Altera, Cyclone V, Cyclone 5, and otherwise a 3.5 inch um, screen. And so for the basic audience, for normal people and kids playing along at home, that is like a retro vintage, not emulation, but like real hardware. I would actually call it still emulation because it's not like even implementing on FPGA the previous CPUs and uh, video and audio circuitry. So even though it's pretty accurate and stuff, it's re still a re-implementation. So probably we should still call it emulation, although not CPU based and certainly um, more accurate. And so as a Game Boy, which I personally actually grew up with and due to that, I actually considered getting one, but then it wasn't important enough, right? So, but now that you can program it, you can even extend it yourself, right? Making it immediately much more interesting. So originally they marketed here as a Game Boy, and advanced and also links so they have here some hardware adapter things so you're not you're not loading roms you are mostly also can insert original cartridges of obviously making this much more legal and even coming with an built-in audio workstation called nano loop which is also it's kind of a gimmick but also showing what you can do with it right so you can why i find this so much interesting so the sure shipping as it it's fun for maybe me playing some game boy games giving that to my child or having a tiny little fun with this midi music midi synth here although truth be told if you want to do real sophisticated midi stuff then just get real sophisticated midi stuff obviously it's still a little bit more of a gimmick but nonetheless a nice gimmick right i don't want to downplay that actually i really appreciate their attention to detail and extra efforts here making this a little bit more usable and extendable and ex explorable um, out of the box or out of the box plus optional extras because you may need some cables of MIDI in if you don't want to solder them yourself. So that is a device that it is, as far as I understand, it had got really good reviews, right? The usual YouTubers of influencers, this stuff is amazing, um, which I nearly wanted to order my, them myself. But so getting to the new stuff, right? I And when it came out, I was always wondering, hey, this would be really cool because we have also those videos, we did quite some videos previously and we will continue with the uh, um, ULX3S of Ray Diana uh, there in Zagreb with a nice affordable FPGA board. And also this is of course not unlike the Mister, right? Another huge, although there are also some GPL controversy, which I'm not getting into today, probably need to make another video, right? So of course there's a huge open source FPGA re-implementation scene and this makes it, of course, a really balanced off-the-shelf product for you playing along at home and implementing your own stuff, right? So what you can do then with that is, and I thought already when this was announced, I thought, hey, this would be so amazing to mess with. And this official program, of course, makes it now much more accessible for everyone without having to reverse engineer everything. And huge shout out to this company. This is exactly the right thing they should have done. And... You see, I, I don't always need to be so negative, right? If stuff is amazing, I can actually call it out for amazing, right? The implementation details might be, uh, the devils might be in the implementation details. It also has an extremely crazy screen, right? 1600 by 1440 resolution. Why do you need that? Of course, for all those up sampling and CRT-like and LCD-like filters, obviously. And that is also what is taken into account here. So as far as I've seen here, I took a quick look. They have here some, I think it was JSON, let's was JSON XML, it was JSON. And 
so it doesn't matter the most. They also have a, so they have on GitHub already a template for that, even version one template. So their template here is this very look just with our own previous videos. Uh, here for example, some core I took a tiny little bit glimpse in here earlier today. Um, bridge host target command handler here with all those input and output wires for bridges, endiness, data slots, safe state, and so on for you to implement your own CPU. And you can, of course, implement your own stuff, right? Like we have previously done think a risk five. So you basically can implement your own, like maybe 3D capable state of the art, maybe multi-core risk thing or so, um, if you wanted to and reuse the hardware. So the way this works is you're supposed as this, with this SDK to use this template and add there your stuff and all of this is zipped together and stored on a I think SD card or USB or SD card or stuff. And so this all this description like audio, audio courses, mostly like audio magic, like how, to, how this loader loads your bitstream then if you synthesize like wrote all your Verilog and synthesize that. For example, this is open source users, which is also another question, by the way. And so all those control data is just for the loader to know how to wire this up. Think also, like this is flagging that as version one, uh, thinking like magic audio PF version one here, for example. Um, I imagine that is for backward and forward compatibility, like for the next product or um, the next format of Bitstream. And then of course you need Intel, Altera um, SDK here also, and synthesize your bitstream, pack it together, obviously using this template, and um, then of course testing, debugging, and so on. Load this on these machines, um, give it to users for others to use, and what this allows us, as I said, so it's not CPU emulation, so it is basically fast and accurate, as accurate as you implement it, obviously, and then adding your own CPU code, right? So the Game Boy and, and other consoles there from back in the day, they also have here like, uh, what was it? Uh, other adapter dongles of uh, wherever it was. All oh, right, it even supports multiplayer link there. And you can use all of this in like IR and bi-directional link bus, whatever you want to implement there, I guess. And other is it Atari links and more. And basically either implement others, for example, you could implement an Amiga, right? Also, obviously using other existing FPGA open source stuff out there. And maybe even what people did with the Mister or other stuff. And implement your own, right? Amiga, Atari, ST, uh, Next Step, Sun Solaris Spark, um, any other like Super, Nintendo, whatever. Of course, in the constraints of this 50 or so thousand logic elements here, LUTs available in this Intel Cyclone, Intel Altera Cyclone V. And yeah, basically the, the rather, uh, the borders are rather in, uh, finite, um, mostly in your imagination and available LUTs. You could even, like heck, you could even <clears throat> implement a 486. There is an open source core for that, by the way, if you are into that, and I saw that already the other year. You could even implement a PC, right? Play Monkey Islands or Prince of Persia or, or other, other shooter of that. E Commodore C64, right? Bubble, Bubble and, and all this stuff. So um, yeah, this graphics is not uh, the most usable actually too. It's a little bit annoying. Let's uh, also, yeah, this is a little bit annoying. Uh, yeah, this graphic also would think that modern stuff is a little bit, yeah. 48K audio, that is of course, so this is just peripherals. All right, it also has multiple memory buses. I think that would come handy here um, for video and audio. As uh, they write here, four independent addressable RAM chips on the ULX 3S, we have only one, plus a built-in block memory of the FPGA. If they are really independently addressable, like if they really have four data buses, that would come really handy for video and audio processes if you implement complex systems. Um, like your own, like one or two addressable RAM chips for your system memory and another for video, another for audio memory, sync wavetable and stuff. 32 bin cartridge bus, 3.35 volt switch selectable. Um, that is of course, if you want to implement your own hardware 
cartridge adapter. Link port is used there with the Game Boy stuff that even works. Um, I think even with a Game Boy camera, which obviously I never had. Um, fun fact, I think I nearly never used the data cable. I think the original Game Boy came with this data link cable. I probably used it once or twice, probably only with Tetris or so. Um, IR, receiver transmitter, stereo speakers, headphone jack, which is more freaking iPhone gives you. <laughs> Controller data up to four players through dock. Um, analog video scaler, which can be customized for best use with each core upcoming feature and for action buttons, primary FPGA, GTEC, JTEC header um, and yeah, the video upsampling stuff looks to be on the other FPGA, right? So it looks to me that um, you can or like not look, it, it reads there in the description that this secondary FPGA is not like SDK modifiable, so they have apparently the video processing scale or system integration, so basically some UI of what you want to use. You apparently, unless you JTAG and flash that yourself and obviously you are your own warranty then. Um, also some MCU apparently for other OS functionality or right for, for that secondary video scalar uh, bitstream loading and stuff. So yeah, there's quite some stuff, as I mentioned, micro SD, quite some stuff in there. And you get with that SDK, if you're not reverse engineering more, um, that one primary Intel Altera or like, yeah, Intel Altera Cyclone V2 flash. Um, other stuff, so getting starting uh, started, of course, you need software. They write here Intel Quartus Lite. Usually you recurring subscribers already know that most vendor FPGA stuff are total pile of horse shit that even professionals don't want to use because they're buggy, slow and stuff, which is obviously why we and ourselves use uh, Yosis and other open source tools and they have Intel synthesis here for Intel Altera FPGAs. I have not tried that yet. Um, we, we use uh, um, so the ULX3S is, uh, is uh, no, it has been some days. So we, we used the two, uh, we, used the, we used the ICE 40 and what was um, ESP5 or whatever that was. And that worked pretty good. I don't know, I would need to research how full featured that is. Certainly their template here is for the Intel stuff. So that would be a huge showstopper for me. I can understand, however, that they need to use those officially working vendor tools. Um, until the open source stuff is as good to be usable and um, would be amazing if that could be used in the future. And um, text editor for creating JSON, JSON files or pocket, obviously. Uh, Intel approved USB or Ethernet blaster JTAG cable? Probably okay for the Intel Altera. Yeah, for that. Hey, you even need a freaking screwdriver for removing the uh, cover and accessing the JTAG header not required for designated pocket models which, which has, uh, have a removable back cover. Micro XDS, yes. so the usual stuff, obviously no surprise there. Uh, debug the core and pocket transfer your JSON file to the SD card, copy core assets to the SD card, transfer core binary files. And uh, yeah, what other stuff that's certainly, what do we have here, packaging your core. That was yeah, like zipping the stuff together and stuff. Anyway, I have not tried this yet. Obviously I neither, uh, the most interested in this Intel software, nor do I have this. Um, but yeah, as I said, this changes everything, right? For me, this transforms this from a kind of single use device. And when I would have made this video, as I mentioned in the beginning, I nearly wanted to make this video. Um, I think I even wanted to order one for some YouTube review, but maybe it was like shipping in for months and stuff, which is certainly, uh, in the meantime, all the videos up on YouTube makes no sense for me. But I also thought, instead of spending, because that actually, last but not least, the cost, right, this costs $209 or so, something of that sort, and as even pre-order here, uh, 219, sorry for that, 219 for, of course, relatively high-end hardware, two FPGAs, microprocessor, and a high-definition display, and all the surrounding stuff. And I wanted, if I would have made this video, I would have probably said, for $200 for that, of course, it's nice hardware and stuff, and probably would have pointed out, hey, reverse engineering and messing around 
yourself with that. But I probably would get a original Game Boy um, for like maybe 50 or if you're lucky less dollars there on eBay to get the real original experience. And then if you're really fancy, swap out the display. Nowadays there are IPS displays where you find lots of YouTubers swapping those with this ready-made IPS kits. And with that you would have had the real original experience, sure. This one would have probably been even better display and better upscaling and stuff than those ready-made IPS um, panels. However, they are very good. However, you would have the original experience, like the really real one, at maybe like half the price, plus minus, depending on where you source your IPS display if you want to upgrade that. However, this, as I mentioned, changes everything because this transforms this from a game, a few Game Boys plus MIDI then, which probably few people use, plus some other converters which you need to buy extra to real home brew friendly um, platform. And this changes everything. And I really appreciate for what you do, what they're doing. You could criticize that they only give you access to one core, like one primary big core there. Um, they for managing and making this a smooth user, user experience, they still don't officially SDK use a microprocessor or this other video upscaling FPGA. But this is like most of the stuff, if you really, certainly all you need for your own homebrew stuff, whether that is Amiga or your completely own Risk v stuff or like completely hardwired Pong. Like if you wanted to get started with this um, FPGAs, actually a relatively affordable high performance thing for just implementing stuff like Pong or Pac-Man and Pure Logic if you wanted to. And there was a very the gates. Um, sometimes I wish they uh, whatever, was it 50,000 or, yeah, wish that would be more visible. But yeah, changes everything. I would wish more companies would be that open and that really makes it really um, accessible home development platform and certainly could easily double, triple or, or tenfold their uh, sales embracing way more people and certainly as Game Boy is nice, is nice, it, it, is, uh, is, well the Game Boy was nice in the 80s, right? Not, I would actually say most modern kids are probably not, un unless you grow them up with access to that, but otherwise of course an iPhone is, uh, or an Android phone has uh, more high fidelity graphics for new kids around the block here and that changes also with that opening that right. So you can create modern graphics, modern games. You could even potentially sell them um, if you wanted to, like a small game studio developer or creating your game studio, starting with stuff. And also makes it more usable, more flexible, obviously, than just one fixed old Game Boy uh, used on eBay or stuff. And it's, it's basically a win-win, right? A win for this company and a win for users. And um, that's what, what counts here. I hope you found this useful. Leave in the comments below what you think. Would you, um, are you invented retro? Um, would you rather, are you more interested in original Game Boy or this not emulation FPGA stuff? And what do you think of this hardware? Would you play old games from the 80s, from the 90s? Actually, I think the Game Boy came out 88, 89. Do you call it? I mean, it technically, I mean, it's, it's also freaking 8-bit, right? So, yeah. For me, so certainly, the only thing for me, I have enough, do I need everything between a spark station and so on? Hey, you could maybe even, depending on how many gates are really in there, actually, maybe we should spend some extra efforts to figure that out. Um, I wonder if it would be enough to theoretically like re-implement an like uh, Super H CPU and a Dreamcast. Where would the limits would be? Core definition files, post communication, what is that? Ship 32, VM, open, not yet supported. 
the reset is 32 at CPU. Hmm. Whatever. I was more interested in how many gates I said probably I should have. Welcome everyone. Happy you enjoy these videos. Um, I hope they're useful and more people learn something. Would we have pseudo as available in user core? Yeah, so that is an integrated block RAM, similar to what we have been working with. I wanted to actually here we have but uh, still not plus communication. So it looks to me that some stuff will need communication with this microcontroller and the other video scalers. So obviously there is some wires, uh, virtual FPGA wires, actually also not only virtual, but also real bus wires obviously interfacing to the other FPGA and the microprocessor, microcontroller. And um, so you need, you will need to have some management wires there to negotiate or signal. It's probably not as much as negotiation as mostly signaling the video output there, uh, what kind of video bitstream you output there for the scaler to their, their additional scalar FPGA to accept and uh, so on. It also looks that you can l have this microcontroller load asset data like graphic uh, graphics and audio from the SD card. Mm. Maybe I, where is actually the exact type? The size of the FPGA would be good to know to have a ballpark figure of how big a system we could synthesize for that. I mean, maybe it's in this graphic. The only thing is this graphic is really annoying too, at least in Safari, probably I shouldn't use that. But I think I yesterday saw it somewhere. Here's also 512. M bit that is by the way they should have multiple right oh, yeah, right so right now okay they have different sizes okay so there we've seen already I, I naturally would have expected them to be equal size but it also makes sense that they are not equal size meaning you have here multiple interfaces for example um, here so they don't even have a rating on that one that is 166 megahertz and it certainly makes sense that you have like one main memory so that should probably be M bit 512 M bit um, is uh, 64 megabyte, right? I'm also limiting what you implement there. So one you could use for video, one for audio, one for main system memory. Um, it's a little bit annoying to scroll here. Do you have cellular RAM zero, 128, whatever they mean with that though. Yeah, 24. With RGB DDR to this this total FPGA for your processing. Just wish there would be. Yeah, if you Google that in the meantime, um, this pocket costs two hundred nineteen dollar. We checked the listing earlier. Just where is the freaking? Which I think is fair for the wood pro, right? They also they had to re-engineer as they they had to engineer this. They need to source all the components. The UL X3S, how much was that? Also 100 um, or one bit squared icebreaker um, was also, was it 70 at least some years ago, whatever inflation is. So the price, I mean, for end user Game Boy only, I would have more preferred 199, but given the modularity and the sophistication of this, sure, maybe, I don't know, maybe the, the parts cost is, 100 plus assembly plus shipping. I just obviously at the end of the day, maybe 499 they would not have covered their engineering costs. They certainly have multiple engineers sitting there, right? Writing hardware and software. Um, electro, electrical PCB engineering, assembly, shipping, sales management, right? Always the people like, but the parts only cost like $100. It's like, yeah, but you also need to manufacture it. You need, need to manage everything. You need to ship it, right? O often nowadays, unfortunately, uh, shipping, especially if you ship in industrial countries um, and customs and stuff also already uh, some 20 bucks or so. So sometimes even more. The, the biggest question for me is using this open source part. This is the biggest deal breaker, but I can't criticize Analog Pocket there for that, um, that the FPGA companies like Altera and so on in the past kept all those details secret. 
that is a general FPGA uh, business illness and, and mindset that is just changing you now with uh, users, which is I would I would actually put in the extra efforts to get this working with users. Um, but actually, maybe should have, I should have spent the extra minute actually to Google um, how full features. You probably also want to donate to users, which is an amazing uh, project, uh, open source project for open source FPGAs and pieces, which we already used multiple times. Um, Mm. However stable it is. Leave in the comments below. The other question is... Uh, I wish this... Uh, anyway, as per usual, if I tried to look this up, I should have researched it. I thought I saw that here yesterday. 50,000 lots. Which, if it's 50,000, maybe it's also wrong. Maybe it's five. I mean, this Intel, maybe we should check, look that up. Or either Intel Cyclone V size chart stuff. Maybe we find it there. Or maybe it's more like 500,000 because everything else. Ah, here is something. I oh, know they have like 40k. Um, okay, they have 40k. So we previously on the Ulex 3 has worked with. 85,000 logic elements. I hope this RLE hopefully stands. Uh, you never know. That is the thing. All the different vendors use different terms there. So you can't necessarily one-to-one -one compare those. Some... No, go away. I'm live on YouTube. Some logic elements are more powerful, or like more complex and feature-rich than others. So you can't directly compare that. Um, so yeah, it's... Hopefully not 25 logic elements. Um, it's maybe... Pocket. Let's hope that is... Yes, Reddit. Maybe... I have 49,000. Okay, what did I say? Did I say 50,000? I hope I said that right. Um, so they might have had this developer kit, which you do not really need if you can open that. I think there is not that much different. I also heard from one developer who never, like, who already contacted them. So it's not always all good, right? I know one developer I know a little bit from Twitter who complained that he contacted them a month ago and never heard back, even probably before that program here or so, unrelated to that. But um, yeah, they also sent out some free developer kits. Um, but obviously I wouldn't count on that. And yeah, 49,000. So that probably means you can't get a Dreamcast on there. I would, from the mm, like ballpark estimate figure, guesstimate that that is way too little for you. And they got Dreamcast. Um, I would, it probably should be possible to do an Amiga 500 or so. Um, and certainly like a PC with, but it might even be too small for like implementing a PC with OPL3 synthesis because this uh, synthesis curves and stuff um, consume quite some um, look up tables. Unless you make this, maybe if you use the like emulate an OPL3 with accessing a sound core or is this 2 mbit or whatever um, memory there and, and having this, um, frequency modul modulated tables pre-computed or on the fly computed there in memory um, and stuff. So yeah, 486 probably possible with some kinder low end sound blaster with, but yeah, it's a little bit limiting. It's It sounds a little bit smaller actually than our Ulex 3S was that we used from Mariana. But nonetheless, still amazing stuff. And um, I wonder if they are pin compatible. If you're totally crazy, you might be able, but don't quote me on that. I'm not your warranty, you're your own. Uh, it might be possible to solder a larger FPGA. I think at times they are. At least the, um, the one as used in the 
it was ECP5 or something, right? Um, I think this one was pin compatible. So I, as far as I remember, there were Ulex 3S variants with all variants from 8, 24, 48 plus minus on top of my head, right? And 85. So we, we were always, ourselves were lucky. We have a Ulex 3S with 85 logic elements that is, of course, whopping a massive. And maybe I should one day make use. And what I said earlier, so 3D, maybe if you're careful, I wonder, maybe I someday, um, maybe next winter, we will continue with our microkernel low and stuff also on the more main channel right there. And maybe we sometimes soon implement a like light 3D deaccelerator, aka F3 Verge compatible stuff of flat growth shading and texturing or so on an FPGA as we have already our otherwise FPGA system there and maybe also some more sophisticated sound. So yeah, amazing stuff. Cannot recommend this company and product. From what I've seen so far, amazing product, amazing that they open that. That is not normal, right? It is not normal for companies to be that open. I, I find this newsworthy and I guess we discussed enough for today as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave me in the comments below what you think, what would you play, do or develop. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and have a good day or night. Just checking the last comments. Um, Cyclone V, our pocket team, stick code from Mr all the time yeah i know the mist i know the mr project but <coughs> i think just the other day literally i saw some controversy on um twitter also regarding the mystery that they don't have some build files as gpl or stuff but it's also not stealing right if it is except if they don't publish that correctly i mean yeah i again I do do some research, but I can't Google each controversy everywhere. If you have, as usual, if, if there are more controversies with the stuff, leave it in the comments below. But this is anyway often, right? With all those, like, actually, I also was considering to make a video about this mini Amiga 500 and stuff. I'm much more concerned about those mini C64 um, Amiga of licensing and legality if they're not just shamelessly stealing all the stuff without proper licensing those old games anyway. So, but I mean, obviously they're not shipping games and the other code, if, if they're reusing other people's code, at least of course they need to license it probably. But nonetheless, last but not least, I highly appreciate the openness here. And maybe if you are, if you want to implement bigger stuff, maybe you can reverse engineering access to the other FPGA and the microcontroller and basically take the whole system over completely for even larger designs um, of, of having more video controller 3D isolation. Bas basically, maybe like taking over the second FPGA there fully, which right now they don't support, but maybe you can, I mean, Obviously, everything is possible, right? They program this bitstream and stuff, so can you. If enough reverse engineering and resources um, apply to that. And then you could, of course, implement bigger systems. Think um, Nintendo 64, for example, or it depends if I'm just giving some examples. I'm not saying it will fit in there. I think it could potentially be possible um, or in as a Dreamcast or other stuff. Um, or yeah, similar, similar PSP. If it doesn't fit in there, just get yourself a bigger FPGA um, or other such stuff. Anyway, hope you learned something and see you next time.